chapter 34 and verse 9 a man that hath traveled knoweth many things and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom he that hath no experience knoweth little but he that hath traveled is full of prudence when I traveled I saw many things and I understand more than I can express 6 and verse 14 Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. in many con Christian congregations. I see some of the young ladies seem like they may have come from the church. Sunday, is that the seventh day of the week according to the Bible? No, it's not. Where, where do we get that from? Why do we do that? In slavery, when you examine history, the white man gave us one day of rest and it was on Sunday. And guess what he did on that day? He forced this image on us. He taught us uh, Christmas. He taught us uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, All Saints Day, Thanksgiving Day, things of that nature. He taught us Sunday. Every lie that you could think of came through this religion. That's right. Under this man. And guess what, brother? This was a real man. When you examine the Renaissance era, there was a painter, you might have heard of him. You ever heard of uh, Leonardo da Vinci? He was hired by um, Rodrigo the Sixth of Rome, Pope Rodrigo. Rodriguez, and they painted his son, Caesar Borgia, as the new Jesus. Hold this up, hold this one up. Now this, you may ask, this is from a real book. It's called the Borgias. You can, you can, it may be in the island here. Go to the library, there's a book called the Borgias, written by Sarah Bradford. In it, she shows you the original sketches that Leonardo da Vinci did of Caesar and changed him into the new Jesus Christ. Read Matthew 24 and 5 again, so that you know the Bible is a true book. Come on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All our people are deceived. Under this image, guess what we were also taught? Because we're very thorough with Christianity, because all of us primarily came from that. We were taught God's laws are done away with. Have you ever heard that? Bring it up. You've heard that, right? That came with this. Can you imagine, as a young black man, you're telling me, God's laws are done away with. So when I steal, Father, when I commit adultery, there should be no repercussion against me. And you ask yourself, why did a young black man fill the prisons? A lot reason why they fill the prisons is because of the church. The doctrines that you fill the children's minds with has poisoned them. Right. There's no penalty for adultery, so I can sleep with your wife, you, I can sleep with his wife, Oh, I'm good. I can steal from you. I'm good in Jesus. Yes. That's what Christianity has taught us. Give me that first John 2 and 4 about God's laws. You should have some questions. You should have some questions. 
This has been the greatest secret kept from you for centuries. And you have no questions. First John 2 and 4, please. First John chapter 2 and verse 4. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him. Because many Christians say, I got a personal relationship with Jesus. I know him. Read. And keepeth not his commandments is a liar. You hear what the Bible says? If you say you know Jesus and you don't keep his commandments, you are a liar. Guess what that includes? All your Christian churches. That's right. right. Seventh day Adventists, right. Jehovah Witness, right. Baptist, right. Catholic, right. Episcopalian, right. right. Methodist, right. Mormons, right. Lutheran, right. Bohemians, Bohemian. right. The list goes on. They're all liars, bro. Right. Right. Every last one of them. So when I heard this truth, like you're standing there, I heard it. I cast, wait, 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 wait a minute. You mean that this is not Jesus? I had a lot of questions. A lot of questions like y'all should have. For example, let me ask you this. Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Is it biblical? What about you? Do you have the answer? Is it biblical? How do you know? Are you saying that because he said no? Give me that, John chapter 10. Because, brother, listen good, brother, with this image came the celebration of December 25th. With this image came the establishing of a Christmas tree and decorating it with silver and gold. John chapter 10, verse 1 through 4, please. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 10, 1 through 5, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. If you don't know it, you're the house of Israel. You're the Israelites. You're not Jamaican. You're not West Indian. You're not Caribbean. Those are lies. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. So the first thing God tells Jeremiah to tell the Israelites, learn not the ways of the heathen. Right. The word heathen means nations. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't worry about the eclipse and the shooting stars. Come on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the nations are worried about that stuff. But you Israelites don't worry about it. Watch. Come on. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain, meaning lies. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Wait a minute. He's getting specific now. For one cuts a tree out of the forest. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen. With the act. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. So once they cut the tree out of the forest, they deck it, meaning decorate it, with silver and gold. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it moves not. They didn't nail the tree down. So let me ex let me ex get, get this right. Let me get my foot together here. There's a custom where you cut a tree down, you decorate it with silver and gold, and you fasten it with nails so it don't move. What custom is that? That's Christmas tree. Exactly. Read verse two one more time. Je Jeremiah ten and two. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. God says, Don't learn that. And be not displayed at the signs of heaven. Okay, Paul. God says, brother, don't learn that. But I was in church, and guess what? With this image came December 25th and putting up of a Christmas tree. I'm letting you know now. The entire Christian religion is demonic. That's right. All the principles, values, and laws of God. Right. Everything in it. For example, Mother's Day. Is that one of God's high holy days, Mother's Day? No, it's not even in there. You read about um, the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah 44, which is about the exalting of the woman, which comes from Egypt with ISIS. That's in Jeremiah the 44th chapter. America said, call that day Mother's Day. And our women run around and go, yes, Mother, Mother Day, Mother Day. No, that's Demon Day. That's right. Every religion, every holiday that we keep, everyone, is satanic is demonic. Right. Give me Leviticus 23. God gave us a list of holidays, but none of you Christians keep it. None of us as Christians keep it. Leviticus 23 from verse 1, please. Come on. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to the children of Israel. That's who we are. Go ahead. And say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Which he shall proclaim to be only convocation. Come on. Even these are my feasts. Let's get the first feast. Read. Six days shall work be done. Six days shall work be done, God says. Go ahead. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Why don't we learn that in Christianity, brother? Because the 
the white man. The friendly neighborhood white man that you and I love so much. We, guess what? We love that man more than we love our mothers and fathers. Our parents would tell us something. We look to the white man for wisdom. What do you have to say? Because in our minds, the white man is God. Now you may say, no, not to me. Yes, to you. And you know how we know it's to you? You have to examine the food you eat. You have to examine the, the way you dress. The holidays you celebrate will tell you who your God is. The nationality that you claim to be will tell you who your God is. Because everything you and I learned, whether it's what we eat, how we dress, holidays we celebrate, came from the British or America. That's right. And none of it came from the Bible. So is the God of the Bible our God? No! We have never done nothing God says from the time we got some sense. We said, I'm not doing that. That's true. Even, look, you see how the um, young girls dress, right? For example, is it lawful, according to the Bible, for women to dress like men? And what I mean by that is wear pants. That's what I'm talking about. Is it lawful? Or does it matter? Is it lawful? Or, or you said it's unlawful? Unlawful. It's unlawful. Very good. Read that for us. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Read that for us. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Now this may seem like a least commandment, but remember what Christ said. He that teaches men to break the least commandment, you shall be called the least in the kingdom, meaning death. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. That means pants. Now you may say to yourself, because this is why if you bring up this verse, a woman will say to you, brother, no man in the Bible wore pants. They all wore robe. They all wore a robe. Give me that. Hold that. Exodus 28, I think, and uh, 42. 42. Thank you. Let's see about that robe doctrine. Because as the Israelites, as we're waking up and teaching the Bible, the white man's scattering. He's trying to get all his little ages together and come against these scriptures. You ain't coming against this. Come on. Exodus chapter 28. And verse 42. Come up. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. The word breeches means pants. In the south we call them breeches. Read it again. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. So you hear what the Bible says? God, when we came out of Egypt, he said make pants for the men. Make pants. So the Israelites wore pants. That was a law for the men, not the woman. Back to Deuteronomy 22.5. Now, my, when my grandmother was alive, possibly yours, the women, the older women I'm talking about, great-grandmother, grandmother, they, guess what, brother? You, know, you may know that they never wore pants. This is a new thing that come up with this new generation here, that the white man used rappers and gospel artists to push throughout the islands, th throughout the world where our people are scattered. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Why? For all that do so are abomination for unto all, the Lord thy God. For all that do so are abomination. So when you put your young daughters in pants, you're making them abominable before God. When your wife puts on a pair of pants and trousers, she is an abomination before God. Bring it up. These are the same women in church saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. It's demonic. That's right. It's evil. Right. It's the same way if a man came in your congregation dressed as a woman. You'd be like, man, get out of here. You throw him out. Because he want, he's look what they call what they call them dudes? Bati men? Funny boy? Then you throw him out. But you allow the woman to dress like you in the church. This is Insane brothers. You understand how crazy is this life is? America, let me tell you something. Let me give a secret. Let me give a secret. America is Babylon the Great. I'm gonna say it again. America is Babylon the Great. I know in Christianity they taught you Babylon is um the Roman Catholic Church or Iraq, but it is not so. Yes? Roman Catholic Church does work with America. Let me prove to you about Babylon. Zechariah 2. Zechariah 2, 6 and 7. I'm going to prove to you Babylon is North America. And the children of Israel would be living in Babylon. That's right. Come on. Zechariah 2, 6 and 7. Bring it up. Zechariah Z. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6. 
and seven. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. What north? North America. Come on. Say the Lord. Say the Lord. For I have spread you abroad. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven. Uh -huh. Say the Lord. Read. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Deliver yourself, O Zion. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. That dwells with the daughter of Babylon. That lives with the daughter of Babylon. Are we over there living in the Vatican City? No. We ain't over there. Are we over there living in uh, Iraq? No. Because the auction slave box and things of that nature was primarily in the Americas and in the Caribbean islands. And a few other places. That's where we're at. Read it again. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Read. For I have spread you aboard for as far as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. That dwells with the daughter of Babylon. Let me ask you this question. The daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon. Give me their racial ethnic group. Do you know the racial ethnic group of the daughter of Babylon? Okay, that's good. That's fair enough. That's fair. Give me that. Psalms 137, last two verses. I'm going to show you the racial group. Because just so that you don't think I'm racially biased. And let me tell you something. The Israelites are not racially biased. You know what? Everybody in here at one time, we loved the white man so much we did whatever he said. We would kill you if he told us to. That's how much we love this demon. So now let's read the Bible. Come on. Psalm 7, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. E-D-O-M. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, Rise, raise it, raise, raise, it. raise it. Even of the foundation thereof, right. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. So, it's calling the children of Edom the daughter of Babylon. Read it again. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Come on. In the day of Jerusalem. In the day of Jerusalem. Come on. He said, raise it, raise it. Meaning, destroy it, destroy it. Right? Even to the foundation thereof. He destroyed the whole land of you blacks, you Israelites. Right? O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. Do you hear that, brother? He's calling the children of Edom the daughter of Babylon. My question now is... Who's the children of Edom? Like I told you at the beginning, when I spoke to you, I said every racial group is in the Bible. Everyone. Nobody's left out. But you have to be able to identify who's who. So my question, we dealt with the children of Israel, right? Did we prove that we're the children of Israel? Yes. Let's prove who Edom is. Genesis 25, 25. Drop that first, drop that one. Keep, keep that one up. Genesis 25, 25. Come on. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. And the first came out red all over like in hairy garments. So wait, 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 wait. You know the story, right? You know this history about Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca wanted to get pregnant. She had twins in her womb, remember? Okay, he's saying yes. Read it again. And the first came out red all over like in hairy garments. So now. The brother right here has on a white t-shirt behind you. You see his white t-shirt? Is there anybody walking the earth that color? No. The white man that we call him white, he's really red, like a light pink. Why? Because with, especially in the sun, you see his blood boil, you see right through him. He is Esau, watch this, read it again. And the first came out red all over, like in hairy garment. And he's very hairy, Me. And they called his name, Esau. They called the first child Esau. So now watch this. What I'm doing right now, I'm proving to you, this is not any racial bias. It's not based upon hatred. It's based on biblical truth. Let's see what... Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Okay, the first blessing on Esau, he said you would dwell on the fatness of the earth. When it says fatness of the earth, meaning you would live the best places on earth. Read and of the dew of heaven from above. You should do, you shall dwell like the dew of heaven from above, meaning everywhere. Esau would live everywhere on earth, read. 
and by the sword, and by the sword, and by the sword shall thy live. So wait a minute. How do you think Esau got the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven, meaning everything? It's like by the sword they should live. The Bible's telling you, not only is Esau right, he would live by war. That's what it means by the sword. He would live by war. But watch this. Maybe that's still not good enough for you. Maybe it's a well, maybe it's a light-skinned black guy. Watch this. Obadiah. Obadiah. You gotta put the clues of the Bible together to find out who's who. Because the white man cleverly erased history. Obadiah. Come up. Obadiah. Chapter 1, verse 1. Listen good. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is set among the heathen. Come on. Arise ye and let us rise up, up, up against her in battle. Behold. I have made thee small among the heathen. God made the nation of Edom small amongst the heathen. Watch this. Come on. Thou art greatly despised. It says you are greatly despised. Nobody likes you. Read. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. The pride of Esau's heart has deceived him. Watch this. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. The cliffs of the rock. Who knows what the word Caucasian means? Or where does it come from? It comes from the mountains of Georgia, Russia. When they call themselves Caucasian, they're saying we come from the caves of Georgia, Russia. That was the Middle Age history. Read that again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, that thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, Here come. whose habitation is high, who's high who lives high, that, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down so to the Edom ground? So is so powerful, Edom would say, who can bring me down to the ground? Why would Edom have that? Ability to say, commandment said they would live by the sword. Watch this. Go, thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Wait a minute. Edom would exalt themselves as the eagle. What is the symbol of America? Anybody know what the symbol of America is? Anybody, does anybody know the symbol of the United States of America? It's the eagle. Does anybody know the symbol of Russia? Not Russia, Spain. When they came over, it was the eagle. Does anybody know the symbol of, give me another group, Rome. When Rome was in power, it was the eagle. Read that again. Go, thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Go, you exalt yourself as the eagle. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Wait a minute. And though you what? Set thy nest among the stars. Though you set your nest among the stars. Is that a light-skinned black guy doing, going space travel? Who set their nest on the stars? 1969, when America landed on the moon, who knows what they said? The eagle has landed. 1969. What are we reading? Bible prophecy. That's right. We've not learned the Bible yet, but you're learning it now. That's right. What are we proving? The ones we call white people? God calls them Esau, the children of Edom. Read that again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down. Say it the Lord. Say it who? Say it the Lord. So I, I want to stress say it the Lord because y'all might hear us and go, oh, you just have a racial problem against the white man. No, it has nothing to do with that. Oh, you and I, most of us love the white man so much, we'll do more for him than we do our own people. That's why we're in poverty today. But what I'm showing you is this is biblical. Now, what does the New Testament say about Esau? Romans 9.13. Bring it out. You know why I'm saying I want to bring this part out? Because when you go back to church, young man, you, you're going to sit in church and they're going to say, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever calleth upon Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Bring it up. Praise the Lord. How do I know they're going to read that scripture? I used to read it since I was the age of five. But here's the problem New Testament, Romans 9 13. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is rain, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Wait, 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 stop, stop. I thought God loved everybody. One more again. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. I can't take this. This is too much for me. This is too much. Because I was taught, like you were taught, that God in, is indiscriminately loves everyone. It said what? New Testament again? Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. Where did Paul get that from? Of course, Paul is quoting something. Malachi chapter 1 
and verse 4. This way to quote, Paul didn't just make that up. He was reminding the Israelites because during the time of Paul, Rome was Esau. Rome. Watch. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Whereas Edom saith. Whereas Edom saith. Remember, Esau's name became Edom. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. We are impoverished, but we will return to the fields of the dis dis desolate places. Edom came in power during the Renaissance. During the Renaissance, the white man conquered all the dark nations. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. The Lord says, Edom shall build, but I will throw down. Read. They shall build, but I will throw down. I want you to listen real good to this. And they shall call them. They shall call Edom, the so-called white man, the border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord has in indignation forever. The people that God has indignation, meaning righteous hate forever. Do you hear what God says? God says these people are the people I have indignation against forever. So it's not just, because you know what we like to do as Christians? We say, yeah, maybe it's one white man God don't like, but he like all the rest. That's not what it said. It's read it again, that part. The border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. It says the people. That includes men and women. So no matter how you or I feel about them, we may love them. We love white women. Oh, she's so beautiful. And we want the black woman to look like the white woman so bad, we force her to put chemicals in her hair to destroy herself. I'm going to say it again. We force her to put chemicals in her hair to destroy herself. Do you know the chemicals seep down to the brain? We go. That's why the women act half crazy. Right. And, but we want her to look like the white woman. So what I'm showing you, this is not no hatred. This is strict. Whatever the Bible says, brothers, we're going to tell you. And you, brothers and sisters, are the Israelites. That's right. You're not Trinidadian, right. Bohemian. Whatever you call yourselves. What do you call yourselves on this island? Bohemian. You're not Bohemian. You're not. That was a label the white man put on you in slavery. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to read. I'm going to prove that. Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to prove to you the white man labeled y'all. What? Hey, hey. What's your last name? Collins? Target. Target? Target. What's your last name? Huh? Trent. Trent, what's your last name? Perfect. What do y'all think these last names came from? Perfect. See that? Slavery. When the white man conquered us, we didn't get, you gotta imagine, if you own animals, when you have a cow, you got a cow, I got a cow, to prove it, and the cows might look the same, what would I do to distinguish my cow from your cow? We would brand it with our family name. So your family names is branded on our backs. Whoever owned you. And now today you have family reunion. You're so proud of that name. That's not your name. That's your master's name. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 37. Here's the name changes. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. You will become a proverb and a byword among all nations. Proverb and a byword meaning being called outside of what God called you. God called you Israelites. He, our family name is Israel. Jacob is our father, but the white man says, no, change that. Call them, divide them up in different groups, Bahamian, American, Jamaican, Trinidadian, and give them the slave master's names. That's a part of divide and conquer. That's why we can never come together as a race. If we came together as one race, as the Israelites, we could end poverty. You wouldn't have these other nations having these stores out here. You'd right. have your own stores. Right. You would not have, let me ask you this, the churches. You know the churches collect millions of dollars every year? What are they, according to God, supposed to do with the money? What are the churches supposed to do with the money? Give me Acts 2. Do you know? He said give it to the poor. Very good. Give me Acts 2. It might be verse 40, 38, somewhere around there. I'm going to show you. The churches have been set up by the government and they are part of our oppression. These churches have divided us, taken our resources, our monies for our families, our homes, and destroyed us. Acts 2, it's around verse 37, 38, 40. Start from verse 2 on down. 42 on down. Yes. Acts 2. Chapter two Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Listen good. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. And 
in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And fear came upon every soul. Come on. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Right. And all that believed were together. All and that believed were together. And had all things common. Had all things common. Read. And sold their possessions. Sold their possessions. And goods. And goods. And parted them to all men. And what? To all. And parted them to all men. Remember what the churches did? They parted them to all men. According? As every man had need. As every man had need, the apostles took the money and poured it to every man. That's right. So that we would not be impoverished. Right. Are these churches doing that today? That's my question. Are these churches collecting money and giving it to the poor? Right up. No, they're not. These churches are beautiful buildings. The pastors got nice cars and homes. And we take the bus and walk. How do I know? Because in America, it's the same thing. It's the same demonic activity. That's right. If you want to change in your lives, we must all come back as Israel right. and do what this Bible says. Right. Then and only then will progress and change come about. Then and only then will revolution truly begin. Then and only then will Messiah return and deliver us. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.